This is part one for lesson 3.5 using a graphing calculator. For this part, for this lesson, you're going to need a graphing calculator, so you should have one checked out to you. Um, if you don't, you do need to get one, so if you don't have one available to you, you th then you need to let me know so that I can get one to you. Um, you'll be checking it out from me and you will be responsible for this calculator. I will integrate into this video actual videos on how to use your graphing calculator. It's not something I expect you to already know. You'll be given the steps and I will show you keystroke by keystroke how to type everything into your calculator so that you can use it for what we are doing. So make sure you use the pause button to pause the video as needed and go back and watch something if you need to see it again. Make sure you know how to use your graphing calculator. We're going to first start with reviewing about an exponential equation, just your basic exponential e equation, y equals a times b to the x. So in the equation in number one, I'm asking you what is the rate and what is the initial value? So remember where those things come from. The rate is going to be the two. That means that this is doubling. So you're going to start, the initial value will be five. You're going to start with five. So at the beginning, you would have five, and then after one time through, you would have 10 because that's gonna double. The next time it would double, the next time it would double, the next time it would double, and so on. So that's how that's working. So that's helpful to know that because then if you go and graph it, you know that it's gonna begin at five, go to 10, go to 20. What about before it was at five? What if I went backwards one? So instead of doubling, what if I did half? It's gonna be 2.5. And what about before that? It was 1.25. So you can actually see how that works. And as long as the numbers are nice and pretty, it's pretty easy to do something like that. But obviously we have a lot of problems where we're not gonna have those really easy um, questions. So we're gonna have practice doing this on a graphing calculator. So we're gonna practice by typing this equation into our graphing calculator. And I'm gonna show you how. For the first problem, I am going to show you how to use your graphing calculator to make a table. So if you look at the very first part of your lesson, it says how to make a table using a graphing calculator. So number one, it says to reset your calculator. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to press the keystrokes and you're going to just follow exactly what it says on the paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit second. And so as I push the button, it's going to turn red and then plus, and then seven, one, two. And that takes you through a series of menus that's gonna clear out your calculator. And what that does is if somebody has used the calculator and put some things in there to you know, graph or whatever, it's not gonna get in your way. So it's cleared it off so it's ready for you. Now I'm gonna to go to step number two, and it says press Y equals. So there's a key in the upper left that says Y equals, and I'm gonna press that. Now in this menu, this is the y equals menu, and this is set up to accept a bunch of different equations. Now the calculator that I'm showing you is a TI-84 plus color edition, and so that's nice for me to show you because it's got the different colors. Um, we're going to just do a couple of things here today. So the first thing I'm going to do, it says we're going to, in step three, enter your equation. So I'm going to type five, and then parentheses, two, close your parentheses, to the power of, now in my calculator, the exponent comes up. In most of the calculators you're using, it's just gonna show the little caret symbol and then the X right here. But in mine, then I'm gonna do X. So the X key is right up here in the upper left next to the alpha key. It says X comma T comma Greek letter theta and that's gonna be our input variable. So no matter what variable you're using, that's what you're gonna use for it. Okay, now I've done step three, and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the table, but I have to tell my calculator what I want my table to look like, because it can't read the paper. So I'm going to do step number four, and it says press second, and then window is right up here, and if you notice above window, it says table set. So I'm gonna set up my table in this next step. So now I'm at step number five. So we're gonna set up the table, and so we're gonna tell our calculator what we want our table to look like. Look on your paper. Do you see how your table starts at negative six and goes negative four, negative two, negative one, zero? We want our table to start at negative six, so I'm gonna type in negative, make sure you don't do the minus sign, do negative, six. 
And in this triangle, it means delta, or the change. And so how much do you want your table to change? So if I want it to go negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, that would be a change of 1. If I wanted it to go negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, that's a change of 2. However, if you look at my table, it starts off with a change of 2, but then it goes to a change of 1. So I'm just going to leave it as 1. I can always skip past whatever I don't want. Okay, I'm now at step number 7. So now we've set up our table, and so now I am ready to see the table that the calculator has made. And it's made this table from my equation that I put in. So we're going to now do step number 7, and so we're going to do second. And then in the upper right, there's a graph key. Notice above it, it says table. And so we're going to hit graph, and now it makes this table for us. And so you notice that the x's start with negative 6. Now it does have negative 5, and on your paper you don't have negative 5. That's okay, you can just skip it. So on your paper you're going to fill in the numbers. So next to negative 6 in your table you're going to put 0 0.0781. And then we're going to skip to negative 4, and you're going to put 0.3125. And then we're going to skip to negative 2, and you're going to put 1.25. And then in your table it goes to negative 1, so we're not going to skip now. So we're going to go to 2.5, and then 5. That's our initial value. And then it's going to double. So it's easier to see once we get to the positives how that's working. But if we go backwards, it's getting smaller and smaller. If it goes forwards, it's getting bigger. Now, if you look at your table, it goes after 4, it goes down to 5, and we're ending at 4. So what we can do is we can come over here to our this round set of keys, and we're going to do the down arrow, and that takes us down the table, and we can go as far as we want. So you can check and see it's getting really big. So these numbers are getting very, very large. And so you can go as far as you want on this. So I'm going to go and type in 5 is 160. You can also, also go backwards and see how small it gets. So when you start getting things like this e, so like e negative 5, that means you're going to take the decimal and you're going to move it back five times. So it's very, very small. If you look on the really big end of this, so if we go up until the numbers get very, very large, you're going to start to see these e's as well. But this time it's positive 6. So that means you're going to take the decimal and you're going to move it six places this is scientific notation, so that's how we write really big numbers in a very small space. Okay, so that's the first problem of how you make a table using your graphing calculator. To get ready for my next problem, after you've copied your calculator, I'm going to go and clear everything. So there's a couple ways to do it. Probably for now the best way is to just reset your calculator again. That's probably the best way to make it so you don't mess anything up right now. So you're going to do second plus seven, one, two. Then if you were to do second and then table, there's nothing in there. Okay, so it doesn't have any, it's just got all the inputs in there, but it doesn't, that's just standard. Okay, at this point you should have this table on your graphing calculator. So if you don't have that table on your graphing calculator, pause until you can have that table. I don't want you to just copy down what I have. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to write down the numbers straight off of my graphing calculator. I'm not going to round these quite so much. I'm not going to put all the decimals because remember that the table is just a tool to help us. As you're writing the numbers and you're copying it from your calculator, make sure that you're paying attention to the steps in your calculator because on this one we're having our, on our calculator it goes negative 6, negative 5, but I'm not writing that down in my table. So you have to pay attention that you're getting the right numbers here. So when I go to negative 2, I have to make sure that I'm paying attention to where I'm at in my table on my calculator so I don't copy down the wrong number. Okay, and then we start getting into numbers that we're familiar. We already talked about these, and I can actually do most of these without a calculator anyway. Okay, so we start out really small. We've got some very small numbers at the beginning, and then we get bigger. So this is our exponential growth. I knew it was growth anyway because it had a 2, which is bigger than 1. I'm going to come over here. Now for this problem, it does not have a context. There's no story problem, so I can't label my x and y axis. So I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, what I am going to do though is I'm going to graph these points. So at negative 6, I'm going to be very, very close to 0, so almost right there. And then the next time around, I'm going to be at 0.3125, so that's hardly any different. You can't tell it's any different at all. Even at negative 2, um, you're just going to be a little bit higher than that. And then the next time at 2.5, that maybe even is a little bit high. Then you're going to go to 5. And then you're going to go to 10. And then 20. And then 40. And then 80. 
and there's not room to put 160 on there. So then when I connect my points, I have this representation of my equation, arrows on both ends, y equals 5 times 2 to the x power. So that's the picture in my graph of that. Okay, questions, what is the y-intercept? So where did I cross the y-axis? That was at 0, 5. What is the equation of the asymptote? The asymptote is this x-axis, and so that's going to be the equation y equals 0. It's a horizontal line, so it's going to go through the y-axis. What is the domain and range? So the domain, remember, in exponential equations, the domain is all real numbers. That's always all the time with all exponential equations. So I know what that's going to be. What is my range? How low does this graph go? It bottoms out at, an, at zero. So we're going to go from zero, and it's going to go all the way to infinity. So that's my domain and range. Is the function increasing or decreasing? Hopefully that's easy to tell that it's increasing. OK, we're going to try another one. The next question, it says a certain bacteria doubles every hour. When, when people, like in the last lesson, we learned about compound interest. And so what I see all the time is students, like they want to use compound interest for everything. Notice that we're not talking about money here, and we're not talking about compounding. So don't use the compound interest formula. This one says double, and so that word right there tells me that I'm going to be using this equation. So it's going to start with 6. And you can write your equation. So the equation that you should write there is y equals 6 times 2 to the x power. Okay, so let me just kind of explain how this problem is going to work. You notice that in your table I've got three different um, columns there. And what that's for is it's for three different parts of this problem. So at first, for this one, you're only going to fill in this column of the table. Don't do the other ones. Don't worry about those right now. We'll come back to that. So I want you to go to your graphing calculator, and I'm going to show you how to input that in your graphing calculator and get the numbers that are going to go right there. So we're going to first make a table. Now if you look at your table, we've got the three different columns. We're just going to do the first one. And so it says number, or sorry, for number one, we're going to write the equation. So you can go back and look at the steps that are on your previous page of how to do this. We've already reset our calculator. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go to the y equals menu and we're going to type in our equation. So this time we're starting with 6 bacteria, going to double, and then to the power of x. So that's our exponent right there. So this obviously step is very, very important because if you don't type the equation right, it's not going to make the table correctly. So you have to make sure that you've done that. Now once you want to get out of there, you can just quit. So you can do second and then this button right next to it says quit and that'll just take you back to what's called the home screen if you wanted to go back to the y equals menu you can do that okay the second step we're going to do is we have to set up the table because right now if we go to the table it may not have the numbers that we want so you need you're going to do second and then right up here by where it says window you're going to click that one and looking at my paper I want my numbers to start at zero and go one two three four five so start at zero go up by one that's exactly what I want the next step is you're going to have it make the table. So second, and then right up here where it says graph, table, and there's your table. So I don't need all of these numbers, but I'm going to write down the 06, 112, 224, 348, 496, and 5192. And so that's all I'm going to write. So pause the video and write those numbers down. Make sure that that's what you're getting on your calculator. Okay, now that we've got our um, numbers from our calculator for this first equation in number one. I'm going to come over here and graph it. Now this one does have context and so I'm going to label my x and y axis. Hours is going to be my x axis. Bacteria is going to be my y axis. And so I'm going to put these numbers on my graph. So go ahead and pause the video while you do that. Okay, there's my graph. I did take a little bit of Liberty right there and I went down to from six before it was that it was at three and so I just put that on my graph because it helps me like gear my graph towards my asymptote as well okay now I'm gonna go down on the page and the next part of the problem it says number three write a new equation but this time the bacteria is going to triple instead of doubling so how would your equation change so I'm gonna use a different color for this one and I'm going to write my new equation. So how does my equation change if the bacteria is tripling instead of doubling? 
So hopefully, you know, we're still starting with six, but we're gonna do three to the x power instead of two. So again, I'll go through and show you on the calculator how to put that in and how to change things, but this time we're gonna be filling in this column, and then we'll be graphing that over here with purple. I'm gonna do purple. And so that we have two different graphs on the same graph. For the next problem, I'm at where it says, number three, write a new equation with a bacteria tripling instead of doubling. So instead of doubling from six to 12 to 24, I want it to triple. So I want it to go six to 18 to 54. So I'm gonna change that. But what I wanna do, I want this table on my calculator to look exactly like what I have on my paper, and I can make it do that. You see these other columns? We can make that happen. So what you can do is go back to your Y equals menu, now, if you wanted to, you could just replace this equation with six times three to the x power. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it down here in the second equation. So I'm gonna do this down arrow and I'm gonna go to this right here. So now it's gonna keep the old one and it's gonna put a new equation. So I'm gonna type six times three to the power of x. Now I don't want my table to change. I'm still using the same one on the paper. So it's still gonna start at zero and go up by ones. So I don't want that to change. So I'm ready to go and look at my table. So if I say second and then graph, now I've got this. So this is Y2. Now in your paper it says Y and it says number three, but that's because it's on number three. This is the second equation that this is taken care of. So this is going 6, 18, 54, 162, 46, 1458. So you're going to copy those numbers from your calculator onto your paper. Make sure you're getting the same numbers that I am. If not, you would need to go back to your Y equals menu and see what the problem is, because if there's a problem, it's right here. So if you're not getting the numbers, you might want to make sure this is an exponent. Make sure you're multiplying by the right thing. So just to get back to your table, remember you do second graph. Okay, so I've got my numbers on my table from my calculator and then I put it in my graph. Now one thing I did, like I said, I went back to negative one and at negative one, this was a two because I had to triple it and get to six. So you notice that this purple graph starts lower, like it's lower on this end, but the y-intercept is the same, but then it goes higher faster because tripling is gonna be faster than doubling. So that's the difference there. So then some questions about that. So number four, it says with a different color graph the new equation, I did that. Number five, it says, how did changing the rate from doubling to tripling change my graph? So how are we gonna say that? Remember that we're not gonna use words like slope. Slope is for a constant rate of change, which this is not. So how would I describe my purple line compared to my blue line? How did that change it? So we would say something like it increased faster Okay, don't say something like the slope is steeper. That doesn't make any sense because we're not talking about a linear equation. So to say that it increased at a faster rate, then that's gonna make more sense. Okay, so it's gonna be doubling to triple. So that's just talking about the rate there. Okay, now number six, I'm gonna to go to a different color of pencil. It says write a new equation. This time the bacteria is gonna go back to doubling, but I'm gonna start with two bacteria. So how does that change my equation? So y equals, what do I start with? Two, I'm gonna double it to the x power. Okay, so one more time I'll show you on the calculator how to enter this in. If you don't need that, then you can skip past that, but you need to be able to put these equations into your calculator and be able to get the table that goes along with it. The next question I'm going to do, it says write a new equation where the bacteria doubles every hour but the sample has two bacteria to begin with. So I'm gonna start with two, so I want it to say two right here, and it's going to double, so it's gonna go four, eight, 16, and so on. So that's, I know what I want it to do. Let's make the calculator do it. So I'm gonna go back to my y equals menu again. I'm gonna leave the first equation and the second equation. I'm gonna come down here to the third equation. And so this time I want it to start with two bacteria, and I want it to double. So to the power of x, my table, I don't need to set it up again. I've already got it set up. So I just have to go second and then graph and get my table. And there are my new numbers. So copy those down. Now, as you have all of these numbers on your table, you're graphing each one of these graphs. And so on your paper, then you can see the differences. Okay, here's my numbers that go along with number six. Okay, the equation number six, that's what these are meaning right up here. So 
the equation for number one, number three, number six. So for number six, I did that in red. When I went to graph the numbers, I did start right here at two, but then I thought, what would it be before it was at two? If it was doubling, it would be here at one, so it's a little bit lower than the purple one as far as where it is at negative one but the y-intercept is also lower. So basically I'm just starting with less, so it's gonna still grow and it's gonna still grow quickly, but it's growing from a smaller point. A couple of things to pay attention to. Because the red and the blue, they're both doubling, and so actually the red and the blue graphs are exactly the same graph. The only difference is, is that one is starting lower. So if I was to take this red graph and slide it up, it's going to actually fit right on the blue graph, except it's just the reason it doesn't look like it's the same is because it's just starting at a lower point. And so if these were lines, which they're not, but if they were lines, they would be like parallel lines. They're increasing at the same rate. And so that's something about the red and the blue that these both have the same rate because they're both doubling. So that's just a little interesting tidbit. Number. Um, three, the purple one, that one's growing faster than either one, so it would not match. You can see the blue and the purple, they start at the same point on the y-intercept, but they branch out and go differently, and that's because their rate is different. So if I answer the question for number eight, how did changing the initial value from six to two change the graph? So what about the graph that's red? What about that is different than the blue one? So the rate is still the same, it's just that it started lower. So it started at two instead of six. That's the only difference. It just started lower. Okay, this is the end of the first part of lesson 3.5. And so you should be able to complete the homework that goes along with that part of the lesson.